Hey, what's up guys? It's Dr. D Flow, and I'm in a new space surrounded by new equipment. I'm gonna get to all these changes in a future video, but in today's video, I wanna focus on this beast. This is my first ever industrial machine of this size, and it's the Sidekick 8 by Shop Saber. It's a CNC plasma table, and it's huge, and that's the point. I can load up standard four by eight sheets on this table. Previously on my smaller CNC plasma table, I had to go to my steel distributor and get them to shear standard size plates and sheets so that they'd fit on my table. Not only was this more expensive, but it also took longer to get that raw stock material uh, because there was always lead time on the shears. With this table, I don't have to worry about that. I just roll up to the distributor, grab the sheet, and head out all within minutes. It's awesome. I'm excited to give you guys a quick tour of the table, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk about some of the things that you have to consider when purchasing a machine like this. Not only its cost, but also all the other factors from transporting it here, to setting it up, to having the right equipment to support it. Let's move over to the side of the table where you guys can really uh, get a sense of how big this machine is. Here you can see the length of the Y axis. The cutting capacity of this machine is 98 inches, by 52 inches, so a little bit bigger than that four by eight, which gives you some wiggle room uh, to make sure that you can fit the plate and cut all of it. What makes all this cutting possible is the steel frame, which is more thermally stable and stronger uh, than aluminum. So when you're cutting long hours and you're producing a lot of heat, uh, this table is not gonna distort like an aluminum extrusion table might. Now the cutting capacity of this machine is two inches. Now I don't care how big that block is, that is gonna be super heavy. Um, so what you can see here is that this table has six legs, three on this side, three on the other side, and that's gonna prevent it from sagging. If I pop this cover off, we can take a look at the transmission setup or what converts the rotational movement of the motor to the linear motion of the table. Now, unlike lower cost systems that may use a lead screw that wobbles or a belt that stretches, this table uses a rack and pinion setup where you'll have a circular gear, which is on the other side of this block, which rides along this linear track. Now, the benefit of this setup is that this is extremely robust and resistant to dirty environments. Dust and grit from the plasma table can get into the rack and it's still gonna move. Also, as you extend the rack longer and longer and longer, uh, it still operates basically the same. You don't see those artifacts such as lead screw wobble and belt stretching with this type of transmission. Now the main drawback for this besides cost is going to be resolution. These teeth are huge, so each rotation of the circular gear is gonna cause the gantry to move uh, a far distance. To combat this limitation, Shop Saber went with a planetary gearbox, which is going to further increase the resolution of the rotating shaft of the motor. For this transmission, I've kind of worked backwards because I wanted to save the best for last. This table uses a servo motor to drive the rack and pinion. Now I've talked about servo motors in my CNC mill upgrade video, but briefly, they are superior to stepper motors in about every way possible. Not only are they quieter, they're closed loops, they know when they miss steps, but they also have very high instantaneous torque, which will allow the table to accelerate the torch in and out of corners really quickly so that we don't see kind of those artifacts that occur when you slow down and the, the plasma is searching for more material to eat up. Um, so servo motors are amazing on this table. Now what keeps all this motion in a straight line is this 25 millimeter linear rail in conjunction with these huge bearing blocks that's gonna keep everything straight and everything really rigid. Let's pop around back to the front of the table and we'll talk about the X and Z axes. The X axis, which as you can see on this picture, is this guy right here, and it's virtually the same as the Y axis. It has a rack and pinion driven by a servo motor with a planetary gearbox, twin 25 millimeter linear rails, four bearing blocks, two on each rail. Rigidity is the name of the game for this table. With plasma, there's not really any force that has to be overcome when cutting, but it's really nice to see a table that's just built above and beyond expectations. You know, a more well-built table is gonna survive delivery. It's gonna survive in a shop environment. It's okay if you bump into it, it's not gonna lose its squareness. Now the Z-axis is a little bit of a different story. Instead of a rack and pinion, we have a ball screw. 
Now, typically with cheaper plasma cutters, you'll see a lead screw here. But the problem with lead screws is that they're very slow. And during the cutting process, you're lifting up and moving to new locations to start new cuts quite often. And this takes a lot of time. So the faster you can get the torch retracted to the next location and down, the faster your cuts are going to be. And this ball screw is going to allow for really quick uh, motion, especially since it's driven by a servo motor. And again, we see these twin 25 millimeter linear rails. In case you're wondering, we have about nine inches or 230 millimeters of motion right here. This allows the torch to be retracted way up, which makes it easy to load material um, and just keeps the torch out of the way when you're not cutting, which is awesome. Now we can zoom in on the torch and its mount. If you saw my DIY CNC plasma cutter video, you'll know that I used a floating head for the mount so that the torch could be physically run into the material in order to determine the height of the material. Now that parameter is super important because if you don't know the height of the material, then you don't know where to position the torch to get that perfect cut. Now the problem with that floating head and with that physical contact with the material is that if you use really thin material, the torch will dent it, which will give you a false starting height. Now obviously this table employs a much more sophisticated way of sensing the height of the material and it's known as ohmic sensing. Now instead of physically running into the material, this wire in a dedicated circuit will sense the resistance between the torch tip and the material. The closer the tip gets to the material, the lower the resistance. This is great for thin material. So there's no floating head here, but the torch is still kind of on springs. And what's happening up here, there's two proximity switches. And if the torch leaves the vertical position, well, that's a collision. Those switches trigger, it tells the controller to shut off all motion. Very slick. I love plasma cutting as a CNC tool. Perhaps the only downside is the fumes and dust that are generated during the cutting process. Now, Shop Saber offers two different options for dealing with these fumes. The first is a downdraft table, which will physically suck those fumes out of the cutting area, down to the table, and out of your shop. That is a great technology because it's not very messy, but it does require significant sized blowers to make sure you have enough airflow to really suck all that dust out. Now, as someone that's always filming, um, you know, I'm looking for the lowest amount of noise possible. I also like the easier solutions because with that draft table, if one of the blowers were to break, you'd be kind of out of luck until you get a replacement. So I went with the second option, the water table. Now I talked about this again in my previous plasma cutting video, but basically the water acts as a trap um, to all of the exhaust and fumes. Now the downside of the water table is that all that grit and grime has to be cleaned out at some point, and there's a bunch of mild steel slats surrounded by water, so your tendency is going to be to rust. But I used some of this plasma defense. It was a three gallon of this concentrate to 100 gallons of the water, and I'm hoping that this is gonna inhibit some of that rust from forming, because this is a huge table. The bigger the table, the more opportunity for rust. The water has actually been in this table for a couple days, um, and the slats are actually looking really nice. Obviously, there's some grime here, because I was taking some practice cuts, and we're gonna get to that really soon. But first, I wanna show you the power source for the plasma. For the plasma cutter, I went with the PowerMax 85, which was recommended by Shop Saber. I was a little bit hesitant from switching to this from my HTP plasma cutter because I already knew it, it worked fine. It actually is the same size torch as this one. But what I came to realize was that one, all of the cutting recipes for this table are based off of this machine. And that's one of the best parts about going with Shop Saber is the community, is the support are all the charts and diagrams they give you with the table so you can get the perfect cut on day one. Um, so that was one reason. And the other reason was that this thing can do about 70 amps, 100% duty cycle, or 85 at about 50 to 60% duty cycle. And if you're familiar with plasma cutting, you'll know higher amperages allow you to cut faster. And the faster you can cut, the better the finish is gonna be on that cutting edge of your material. For some reason, I didn't talk about the speeds when I went over the motors but I will now. This thing is capable of 1,000 inch per minute travels or about 420 millimeters per second. I did not want to bottleneck this high performance with a lower powered plasma cutter, which is why I went with the PowerMax 85. This thing, of course, has all the bells and whistles for mechanized cutting. It has the arc voltage for torch height control. Um, you can trigger 
the firing of the torch. It's got a pilot arc for low frequency operations. Very, very similar to my old cutter, just more power. So here is the temporary setup for controlling the plasma cutter. Emphasis on temporary. I'm gonna work on buttoning this all up and having a more formal workstation, especially since I need to make sure that none of the water from the uh, plasma table gets on the uh, power source or anything like that. But here's the basic workflow. The table is controlled through a software known as WinCNC. It runs readily on a PC. Um, and it connects to the controller on the plasma table through some PCIe cards. This software right here is the basic control panel and it allows you to move the X, Y, and Z axes. But besides that, it's pretty much expecting you to import a G-code file. Now to generate that G-code file, you would typically take a DXF or a drawing file and import it into a nesting software, which allows you to pack a bunch of parts on a really big sheet so that you're really efficient but I haven't found myself needing to produce that many parts yet, so I'm really happy that I can use Fusion in order to generate the G-code because uh, ShopSaver has a special post-processor that allows you to go from a uh, DXF file or a sketch in Fusion to code that WinCNC can recognize. So what we're gonna do really quickly is generate my little engineered square to check the squareness of the table as well as some uh, dimensions. With the G-code file on my flash drive, we can load it into the program. And from here, we get to select what type of material we're using. And again, this is when I said there's so many recipes in here to get that perfect cut on the first try. We're gonna do 16 gauge mild steel at 45 amps. So we'll click done here. And then we'll go ahead and set the home position of the plasma cutter. calibration square turned out great. I even snuck in some of these festive pumpkins that are gonna look great in the yard. But now it's time to take advantage of the large work area of this table by cutting out a bumper for my car. Now I'm gonna cut that out of 3 16 inch mild steel, so it's gonna be much heavier. Gonna have to cut a little bit slower, but it's going to take up a lot of the real estate of the table. I'm gonna cut it in this video, but you're gonna have to stay tuned and get subscribed to see the assembly. <laughs> Still heavy. Wow. That edge is amazing. Let's get a close up of this edge. Oh, wow. 
There's nothing there. You must refocus it, yeah. As you just saw, that backside was super clean, minimal dross. I'm super excited to put this build together, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. This is gonna be coming to you soon. But before I let you go, as promised, I wanna talk about some of the considerations that you need to keep in mind when you purchase a table this size. The first thing to think about is delivery. Now because of the size and the weight of this table, this was my first exposure to riggers. They're not cheap, but they do the job correctly and they get the table where it needs to be safely. This was a little bit of a specialty scenario because of the length and weight of the table, he had to use eight foot long forks so I had to make sure to call that in before he arrived. The next thing you need to consider is space. Not only the footprint of the table, but you saw how I loaded the sheets from the side. So you basically need two table widths of space as well as some uh, perimeter around the table so you can access everything and walk around. The third thing is air. Now there's no point of owning a huge plasma table that can run for hours and cut hundreds of parts out if you can't supply it with enough air. This is a two-stage Craftsman air compressor that supplies 14 CFM, which is plenty of headroom for the plasma cutter. Obviously, this is an additional space consideration, uh, cost consideration, and we haven't talked about yet, but a power consideration. So the table requires a 220 volt 50 amp for the plasma cutter and a 110 for the motors. This guy right here requires a 220 as well. So you gotta make sure that your shop or your home garage is able to supply this much power to make everything work flawlessly. The air compressor comes to the dryer. Again, clean air is a must. Uh, in the future, I may go with a refrigerant dryer system just to remove more water, uh, but I love this five stage dryer from HTP. The last thing you need to consider is electrical noise. With a table this big and a plasma cutter that strong, even though it's technically low frequency operation, you're going to have electrical noise and you need a path for that electrical noise to ground to get it away from your microcontroller and your stepper motors and your PC and any other uh, low voltage electronics in the room. So if you come around here, this is a copper rod that was driven six feet into the ground. I hit rock at that point, so that's why there's still a little bit of it sticking out. Nonetheless, it's a great connection to ground. It is a path for that noise to get out of this shop. If you're in the market for a large format plasma table, these are the things that you need to keep in the back of your head just so you're prepared to purchase that. I've really enjoyed the Sidekick 8, but if you're looking for something smaller, there's a smaller variant in the same lineup offered by Shop Saber. And with that, I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one.